Come on, First Baptist, why don't you stand and praise the Lord with me this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is Palm Sunday this morning. I know you came to praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to be in the house one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our call to worship this morning comes from John 4, 23 and 24. But the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I invite you this morning to just go ahead and praise him, give him some praise, hallelujah. Worship him wherever you are this morning. If you're home watching us on live stream, I want you to join us this morning, hallelujah. All over the building, let us give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. His name is worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, glory to his wonderful name. Hallelujah. This is our God who says that he, but we are worth enough that he could send his only son down here to die for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to his wonderful name. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. He's a healer. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Praise him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, glory, glory, glory to his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. Come on in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. We'll wait for you. Hallelujah. Come on in. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious, gracious, eternal Father, we come to you this morning, O Father. Just giving you thanks, O Father. Thank you, Lord, that we could come into your house to say, Lord, you are worthy to be praised, Lord, yes, Lord. Lord. Your name is great, O oh, Father. Yes. And we just come this morning acknowledging your greatness, O oh, Father. We invite the power of the Holy Spirit to, re re to rule, reign, and abide in this service this morning, O oh, Father. Allow it to be just fill us anew, O oh, Father. Fill us afresh this morning, O oh, Father. That something we said here this morning, something will be done here this morning, that we will allow someone to cry, I yield, I yield my life to Jesus Christ, O oh, Father. Father, we pray for the preacher who will stand behind your sacred desk to, del to deliver your word today, O oh, Father. Speak through her, O oh, Father. Touch her afresh, O oh, Father, from head to toe, O oh, Father. That your word will just flow smoothly through her, O oh, Father, and something will be reached, and something will be said, O oh, Father, that will touch someone's life today, O oh, Father. We pray a special prayer for our pastor, our first lady, our first family, O oh, Father, and every family represented in this church, O oh, Father. Touch every heart, O oh Father. Touch everything we do here today, Father, that it will be acceptable in your sight, O oh Father. I have prayed, O oh Father, and I have asked, O oh Father, but at the end of the day, O oh Father, we ask that your will and only your will will be done in this service today, O oh Father. We come giving all these praises, all these thanks, O oh Father, in the name of our Father, in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And let everyone say, Amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. His name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, you may be seated as I call Brother Stephen Bright to come with our scripture, followed by Deacon Mark Reed with our welcome at this time. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. It's just a blessing to be here today on Palm Sunday. 
Hosanna to the King. I'll be coming out of John 12, 12 to 15. The next day, a great multitude that had came, that comes to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and, and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus went, he found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written. Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. May God have the glory. Amen, amen. Uh, we'll have um, Brother Michael Ford will do our welcome this morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning, saints. How's everyone this morning? Good. Aren't we happy to be here in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. This announcement is for our first time visitors. If we have any, would you please stand and say a little bit about who you are? Even our long time haven't been around. <laughs> Member. Welcome. <laughs> On behalf of our esteemed pastor, Pastor Ali Bright, and our wonderful First Lady, Minister Sean Treese Bright, welcomes each and every one of you here, and God bless you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now it's time for praise and worship. Hallelujah. So we're all going to join in this morning and sing as... Voices of Victory leads us in a time of praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say what a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. He's a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. The angel heaven and earth, what a mighty God we serve. He's an awesome God, what an awesome God we serve. He's an awesome God. We serve the angels of heaven and earth. He's awesome. God, we serve. He's a loving God. What an loving God we serve. He's an awesome God. We serve. He's a loving God. What a loving God we serve. He's a loving God. The angels of heaven and earth. 
Every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow. He is alone. He is alone. Hallelujah. He is alone. He is alone. Hallelujah. He is alone. He is alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let our King be lifted. 
higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you'll be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you'll be lifted higher. Lifted higher, Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Let our King be lifted up. Let
that our King be lifted up. Hosanna. Hosanna. Let our King be lifted up. 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 Let together and give the Lord some praise in this house for he's worthy the Lord is worthy he woke me up this morning started me on my way this is Palm Sunday y'all this is Palm Sunday he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy the Lord is worthy Hallelujah. He'll rock you in his bosom and shower you with his love because he's so worthy. We're going to thank God for his loving kindness and his tender mercy. God bless you. Come on, oh, come on, come on. Don't stop praising him now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came to meet the Lord this morning. I know he's here. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet and give him some praise in the house. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Make it intentional this morning. Hallelujah. We didn't come to warm the pews this morning. We come to meet with a great God this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to his wonderful name. Hallelujah. 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 Fill me, oh Lord. Fill me again, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is one of the most holy times of the year. Come on, Christians. We got to celebrate the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. We need some power because when we leave here, we need, we need to go out there and tell somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we need to be filled. Hallelujah. We need some power. Hallelujah. 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 We need some courage. Hallelujah. We need some courage. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to call our First Lady to come with our announcements, followed by pastoral comments in that order. Praise the Lord. God bless you, family. Um, Deacon Bright shared that he has an announcement to share. I'm going to call Deacon Bright forward first, if that's all right. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 
Hallelujah. So that means we got to keep on praising him because the, cause, cause the, cause the blessings keep flowing. All the blessings flowing into your life, that means you should be a praiser. That's every day. I'm expecting blessings to come, so I'm going to praise them all the day long. That's more than something to say. That wasn't an announcement, but it is. But God bless you. God bless you on this morning. I'm here on behalf of our Pastor's Aid Ministry, uh, just making you aware about the fish fry. Good Friday, we're having the fish fry dinners and sandwiches for this Friday coming up. So the dinners will be $15 with string beans and potato salad which I said I wasn't going to make no more, but, <laughs> but God, <laughs> it's a but God story, but, uh, <laughs> and we're going to have, uh, uh, the sandwiches is $10 with a side of coleslaw, you know what I mean? So, uh, just come on out and participate, get a good meal, it's Friday, it's fish day, it's, 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 it's good Friday, and we're going to celebrate Christ, you know, even he fried fish for the disciples, so. We're going we gonna to stay right in line with the scripture, frying that fish on Good Friday. Come on out. Come on out. Uh, uh, support our pastor's aid because we love him and the family. And we love one another. And we love fish. And Friday is fish day all over the country. So why not here? Come on out and support us. God bless you. <laughs> What time? 12 to 4. I said I wasn't going to make the salad no more, but I couldn't keep it to myself. <laughs> he said he wasn't going to make it no more. Uh -huh. You can't keep that to yourself, D. We have an uprising up in here, First Baptist. <laughs> well, we're glad you yielded to the Lord. First Baptist, I wanted to just pause for a moment. God bless you. God bless you, young King Hill. I see you back there. Hallelujah. Yes. I saw you come through the door. It brought my heart some joy. It's good to see you. Amen. Amen. Threw me off for a second, but worth the pause. Amen. God bless you, Sister Patsy. It is good to see you. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to yield to Minister Young to share the announcements with you this morning. But I wanted to pause for a second and just say thank you um, to everyone for your love, for your thoughts, for your prayers, for your expression of your love uh, in celebrating my 48th birthday. I truly appreciate everything that was done, whatever effort you contributed to it. I want to say thank you. Uh, it does my heart well. It does all of our hearts well right to be encouraged amen and so this first lady just appreciates you um it can look like a glorious and glamorous thing to do to be the first lady but i assure you it is more of a press than it is a position of prestige so when you take a moment to say thank you when you take a moment to pray for me when you take a moment to consider me my flaws and all and still show up with some love, this first lady is grateful, amen? amen? I definitely stand before you a broken vessel, right? There's no perfection in me. God pours his excellency in all of us so that he gets the glory. And so I just wanna say thank you for counting it not robbery to do whatever you did to make uh, love show up. I really, really appreciate it, amen? And so on that Friday night leading into that week, into the weekend, I was uh, blessed to be able to rest in the Lord and hear uh, the word come forward from Deacon Bright through word and worship. And at the end of service, I heard my pastor say, my wife said, I got to stay away from her. And I said, huh, gladly. And at first, I'll be honest with you, I didn't like it. But what the Lord showed me was I actually was looking for some time to myself. I know y'all don't think I ever need that, but I was looking forward to some time to myself. And so I heard that, I said, okay, well, let me go get myself a hotel room with my funny feeling stomach. And I rested up. And then the next day I got up and I didn't do anything according to a calendar. 
except for the church meeting that we had, amen? And then after that, I just took some refreshing in and of myself to really just refresh and get before God, to deal with some broken places, to deal with some wounded places. I needed that little bit of respite. And then on Sunday morning, I came back and met you all here. I just wanna be transparent with what my weekend was that weekend. And so to get it capped off with the celebration of the missionaries anniversary, and then to feel the love that was shared and laid upon me uh, in the educational wing, it really was a blessing. Um, I didn't take a trip to the Caribbean, but I tell you, I was absolutely refreshed. And because of your love, I was fully refreshed. So thank you for everything that you did. I appreciate you and I love you. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. All right, I'm going to do outside announcements first. We have Tabby's tab coming from us. She's one that we support through crew. Um, she shared how she took a sabbatical. So I'm just going to read um, what she heard God say to her during her, her uh, sabbatical that she took. She said, mi hija, I see you. Mi hija means my daughter. I see you. You look charred and burned from all the little fires happening around you. I'm so glad you've come to me. I'm the living water, drink up and be refreshed. Don't you remember that I can cause life to come out of burned out things? Look what I've done with a 150 year old banyan tree in Hawaii. How much more do I love you? Do you know your life is bigger than what you do or what you produce? People only see in part, but I see all of you in all of your efforts and even your mistakes and I love you. Don't worry about the work that you do. You are my workmanship. Don't you see that your obedience and development matter more to me than the work you produce? I love you as I created you. So live out who I created you to be. You will stumble and might get burned. You might even have growth issues like everyone else, but that doesn't change my love for you. Remember when my son, Jesus, esteemed both John and Judas at the Last Supper. The love of God is greater than our works and divinely gracious. Don't just dwell on the pains of the past. Keep your eyes set on things that are above. Imagine a future where my truth reigns in righteousness. Consider how I might use hardships and betrayals in your life to propel you in your leadership for your growth. I am in control and sometimes I allow the fires around you to usher you into a sweet time with me where you are set free. It is what it is, but I am who I am. Don't worry. You're doing too much, Tab. You only need to consider what does love look like in this moment, according to 1 Corinthians 13. I am love. Do you see me? Amen. Praise God for her being able to take that sabbatical and hear from the Lord. Uh, we have coming from us New Jersey State Baptist Deacons Convention. They are celebrating 58 years. It's going to take place at Pines Matter. That's in Edison. Going to be from 11 to 3. The cost is $65. And this year, they're celebrating deacons and deaconesses who have served for 40 years or more. Amen. All right. Friday, this Friday, we already heard about the Pastor Z Fish Cell. We also have Minister Soares who will be preaching at Macedonia Baptist Church at 7 p.m. for the seven laugh words, amen. If you have nothing on your calendar for 7 p.m., I encourage you to go out and support Minister Soares, amen. amen. And then next Sunday, what time do we start y'all? Good job. That is right. We start at 10 a.m. It's a, it is Resurrection Day service. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 He is risen. That is the foundation of our faith. Hallelujah. 
He is risen. Hallelujah. 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 All right. All right. Carpenter's Messages and Unity will be ministering. And then on Saturday, April the um, 6th, we have our church cleanup from 9.30 to 2 p.m. You can um, sign up in the vestibule. Saturday, 4.13, Rose Fellowship will be taking place at Laurel Circle Assistant Living from 2 to 3. And then uh, please make sure you mark your calendars for Saturday, April the 20th. We have our leadership meeting at 9.30. And then save the dates. Sunday, April 21st. 75th ushers anniversary they will be having two services amen 11 a.m pastor bright will be preaching and 3 30 will be pastor conway from sharon baptist and then we will be celebrating the following sunday that's on april the 28th 117th year, 117 years as a church amen We will have one service, which will take place at uh, 11 a.m. And the pastor for that, the preacher for that service is going to be Pastor Wise the second. He is coming from Linden. Bless your church. Let church say amen. amen. Let church say amen again. Amen. If you love the Lord, give him a big round of applause. Amen. 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 Thank God for his presence in this house on today. Woo, I'm glad he's here. How about you? I am glad he is in the house. We serve a mighty good God. Amen. We give honor to God today who's ahead of my life. Amen. To First Lady, Minister Santrice Bright. Amen. Praise the Lord. To all of our preachers in the house. Amen. All of our deacons. Amen. Deaconesses. Amen. Missionaries. Amen ministry heads amen to amen our ushers amen to redemption to all of you the people of god amen. to our worship leader deacon ganscott thank the lord for each and every one of you i'm excited about what god is doing in this age that we are living in even now and i've heard people all the time saying you know what man uh, the bible amen confirms what's going on in this world today but, but I, I see it a different way. I see what's going on in this world today confirms that the Bible is real. I mean, that's the way I see it. I see what's happening now confirms what's already been said. Praise the Lord. But we, we've already been warned that there was going to be wars and rumors of wars. I don't need wars and rumors of wars to confirm that the Bible is real. Praise the Lord. I don't need the Bible to confirm that they're real. I need them to confirm that the Bible is real. Don't let nobody fool you. We got to change our way of living and change our way of thinking, amen. Understand that what's going on now has already been written. Which means he's got the whole world where? In his hands. That means he's got control of everything regardless of what it looks like. And so we're grateful today, amen, for the word of God. The thing that we can stand on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. We're asking, amen, today that you continue to keep uh, our members in prayer. Uh, Luz, Edward Darby, her husband's birthday is coming up. Let's keep her in prayer now along with her family. Amen. amen. And we know that God is able to comfort them. Amen. We are praying for Sister Ada Bright as she recovers from back surgery. Amen. Brother Jimmy Bright as he was coming from back surgery. Amen. And again, Sister Brenda Jackson as she is home recovering. Amen. 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 We know our God is a healer. Amen. And he moves in his own time. So you can't hurry God. Praise the Lord. We just have to wait on him to do what he's doing. Praise the Lord. And he will get it done. And guess what? When he's done, we'll discover that he does all things well. Amen. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. This is Palm Sunday. Praise the Lord, this is Palm Sunday. We're grateful for what happened on Palm Sunday. Amen. Jesus rode into town, amen, on the back of a colt as a humble servant. 
And the people, amen, took the palms, amen, and waved them. Yeah. Threw them in the road as he went and said, cried, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We say the same thing today. Yeah. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us celebrate, y'all. Let us celebrate. Praise the Lord. Let us give God praise. Let us give him glory. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. Amen. About what the pastor is doing. Continue to keep them lifted in prayer. Don't forget, I have a request on the floor for those who would like to be on the pastor's aid ministry. Amen. To please let, amen, our president know or uh, minister in training, Deacon George Bright know, amen, so that we can uh, interview you and bring you on. Amen. 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 I am certainly asking you all to continue to keep uh, Minister Sawyer's in your prayers for the last seven words. She's bringing the first word. Amen. 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 I want to thank the Lord for a fruitful rehearsal. Amen. With unity and Carpenter's messengers the other night, we're looking forward to uniting on next Sunday. Amen. So that the Lord can have his way. Everybody who signed up, amen, to clean the church, I applaud you myself. I thank God for you, amen, filling in for those who normally could but can't now. Thank you so much for your, uh, your willingness, amen, to be used of the Lord as you take care of the church that you praise God in and that you worship in. Amen, amen. Again, thanking Rose, amen, ministry, women's ministry, amen, for uh, everything that they have planned going forward, man, especially... Fellowship at Laurel uh, Circle of Sisters Living, amen. We know that God will use them mightily, amen. Praise the Lord. And we're looking forward to our leadership meeting. So please, please, everybody who's a leader, make sure that you're going to be there. Again, I want to applaud these musicians, amen. Redemption, our musicians. Thank the Lord for our worship leader today, Deacon Gan Scott. And for, amen, uh, Minister Watasha Young for, amen, bringing us the announcements on today. Amen. And always acknowledging the chairman of our deacon board, Deacon George Bright, Jr. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'll turn it back over to you, Deacon. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody know what time it is? Oh, I didn't hear you. Praise the Lord. It's offering time, church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nobody sounds excited about giving today at all. I don't know. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, the first basket will be for tithes and offerings. That's the first basket. Bergen the line. We have a preacher in the house today, a preacher we all know. No? So the second basket will be for the preacher. Amen? Amen? If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and usher will serve you at this time. If you need change, please also ask an usher for an envelope and write the amount of change needed. For those worshiping virtually or those in the sanctuary who desire to give in another manner, first you can mail a check. The First Baptist Church, Attention Trustee Ministry, 43 Franklin Street, Southbound Brook, New Jersey, 08880. Okay, your second option is by Zell. Search for FBC, SBB, Trustees, with an S, at gmail.com. You will see a memo section or what's this for to designate the category of your giving. That's FBC, SBB, Trustees, at gmail.com. You may also come by doing trustee hours, which are Saturdays from 12 to 2. Please make sure to contact Reverend Peoples to let her know you're coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we ready to give? Yeah. Amen. Okay, ushers, you may come forward at this time. It's offering time, offering time. 
Get your money in your hand. Get your money. Wave it to the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. It's all for in time. Get your money in your hand. Wave it to the Lord. Oh, 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 I'm gonna get my blessing. I'm gonna get my blessing. Reach up, get your blessing. Oh, 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 I'm gonna get my blessing. I'm going to get my blessing. Reach up, get your blessing. Oh, 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 oh. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal Father, we just want to give you thanks, Father, for the opportunity to come back to give some back of what you've blessed us with, O oh, Father. Father, we pray that you will bless this, these fruits that have been given, O oh Father. Multiply them for the furtherance of your kingdom, O oh Father, and for the spread of your gospel throughout the world, O oh Father. Bless those who have stewardship over these funds, O oh Father. We ask all these in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. Okay, folks, it's preaching time. And we do have a preacher in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask Deacon Bright to come with our preacher introduction at this time. Then we'll have sermonic selection by the Carpenter's Messengers. And then after that, we will have our preached word. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'm here to uh, introduce our preacher. I'm here to present her to you and introduce her to the ones that may not know her. Uh, you know, on yesterday when I was thinking about this task, I was like, well, I'm honored, but then it came to mind, well, how much do I really know about Reverend Peoples? And it came to my mind that it's, I know a lot, but what don't I know? <laughs> so, you know, sometimes, you know, there's a lot of things about people that we don't know. And I was like, Lord, well, you know, Lord, I know there's something that I don't know, but I want to I wanna be able to see it. So so I have her bio, and I think that, you know, sometimes we don't never read the bio of the ones that are ministers in this house, and she's an ordained uh, a preacher. So I just was led to um, obtain a copy of her bio <laughs> so I could see what I didn't know about her, even though I know so much. So Reverend Peoples, Reverend Peoples, Shauna T. Peoples is an associate minister here at First Baptist Church, Southbound Brook, where uh, she received her biblical training from a young age, uh, where Pat, Reverend Audie Albright is the pastor and Minister Santrice Bright is the first lady. Reverend Peoples committed her life to Jesus Christ on in December 2000. The word of the Lord had so pierced her heart that she determined that there was no turning back. From then on, the journey of getting to know God, hallelujah, and her position in Christ became utmost priority. Hallelujah. This time involved intense study of the word and much prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Shortly thereafter, the Lord began grooming Reverend Peoples in ministry by providing the opportunity for her to teach at Bible study and on other occasions as the Spirit led. On February 21st, 2005, Reverend Peoples accepted the call into the gospel ministry, and on February 25th, 2007, she was licensed by First Baptist Church of South Bombro. After faithfully serving in ministry at First Baptist Church and in the church community, and upon a successful full examination in the Bible doctrine by the Permanent Council of the District Union Number no. 1 of Central New Jersey, it was unanimously agreed that Reverend Peoples would be and 
would be, and on November the 13th, 2016, she was ordained into the gospel ministry. Reverend Peoples is honored to serve at First Baptist Church as chairperson of the trustee board, church administrator, general board moderator, adult Sunday school teacher, director of Unity Choir, and member of the praise and worship team. Reverend Peoples has a bachelor's of science degree in accounting from Riders University and a bachelor's of arts degree in biblical studies from Somerset Christian College. Reverend Peoples serves as the director of uh, internal audit for Avaya Holdings Com Corporation. The Lord has placed a special burden on Reverend Peoples for the body of Christ that according to the word of God, they may be able to comprehend with uh, all the saints what is the width, length, and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, hallelujah, that they may be filled with the fullness of God, according to Ephesians 3, 18 and 19. Her prayers is that they might tap into the abundant riches of the that the Father has bestowed with all privileges and responsibilities. Above all, her heart's desire is that, that through her ministry, others will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. As Reverend Peoples continues to grow in the Lord and in ministry, she stands steadfastly on the word of God, which declares, the Lord shall perfect that which concerns you, being confident of this very thing, that he who begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, which is Psalms 138 and 8 and Philippians 1 6. Well, this is the bio of Reverend Peoples. So I've seen so much more about her that I did not know. But I see her daily labor in the, in the body of Christ, <laughs> uh, uh, according to all these different offices. But uh, uh, it's, God has given her the strength and the tenacity to, to be able to carry it out and see it through. Because I know that she lives and carries it out according to the Holy Scriptures, which is by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so I'm blessed to be able to introduce her on this morning and present her. Uh, but I know that she's a woman of God. I know that for sure. And I know that uh, she's careful how she responds. And sometimes you may not get no response. All depends on what you're saying. But that's the God in her. And I know that she can rightly divide the word of truth because we have been under the teaching and, and, and um, preaching. Father, this is not our first trip. But we know without in expectancy that we're going to be blessed on this morning. We're going to truly be blessed on this morning because she uh, is full of God's word and she has a sincere spirit and a desire to, to be the blessing that God called her to be. So, Reverend Peoples, we're going to give you your marching orders. Reverend Peoples, Reverend Peoples. preach the word. Reverend Peoples, preach the truth. Reverend Peoples, preach the word when they want to hear it, and especially if they don't. For God gets the glory. God bless you, Reverend Peoples. Let the Lord use you. We love you. God bless you. All right, Carpenters, come on. Oh, yeah, we're going to continue on giving God the glory. He's marvelous. He's marvelous. Hallelujah. He's wonderful. His word is right and true. God is truth. God is truth. And we know and believe that and know it to be right and true. Amen. That's why we're here because Hallelujah. we know he's the truth and he has revealed himself to us through the word of God. So let us continue on this journey together, rejoicing as we go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For the word of God, hallelujah. I'm holding fast to it, how about you? Are you building on it?
I'm holding fast to the promise. Oh, yeah. For God has spoken to me. He promised me. If I believe, I can move mountains into the sea. Don't you know I believe what he said? When he said it, it's already done. It's already done. I'm holding fast, yes. I'm holding fast to the promise. Oh, yeah. For God has spoken to me. He promised me. If I believe, I can move mountains into the sea. Don't you know I believe what he said when he said it? It's already done. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's already done. I'm holding fast, yes. I'm holding fast to the promise. Oh, yeah. For God has spoken to me, He promised me, if I believe, I can move mountains into the sea. Don't you know I believe what He said when He said it? It's already done. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's already done. I'm holding fast, yes. I'm holding fast to the promise. Oh, yeah. For God has spoken to me. He promised me. If I believe, I can move mountains into the sea. Don't you know I believe what he said when he said it? It's already done. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's already done. Oh, thy word, yes. Thy word has been settled in heaven. Oh, yeah. Now we must call those things to be. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As is in heaven, on earth shall be. Don't you know I believe what he said when he said it? It's already done. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's already done. Oh, thy word, yeah. Thy word has been settled in heaven. Oh, yeah. Now we must call those things to be. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as is in heaven, on earth shall be. Don't you know I believe what he said, when he said it, it's already done. Yeah, 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 it's already done. Well, it's God to say, it's God I say, I believe it's already done. His promises, His word I read. I believe that it's already done. It's God to say, His word I say. I believe that it's already done. His promises, His word I read. I believe that it's already done. I believe what he said when he said it. It's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's already done. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For doing what you do. Oh, you need to tell somebody, tell somebody about Jesus, how he set you free, gave you the victory. Tell somebody, 
Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. You need to tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus. How he set you free. Gave you the victory. Tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Listen. Go and tell somebody how he was sick and he made you well. Heal your feeble body. Now the world you can tell. Tell them how you didn't believe and he made a believe out of you. Now you can tell the whole world how he brought you through. Oh, tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus. How he set you free. Gave you the victory. Tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Like the woman in the Bible days who met Jesus at the well. She thought she was meeting a stranger, but all about her life he did tell. She ran back to town, talked about the joy she found. See, when the Lord does something for you, you want to tell her what you do. Oh, tell somebody, tell somebody about Jesus, how he set you free, gave you the victory. Tell somebody, tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. We're going to say that again. Like the woman in the Bible days who met Jesus at the well. She thought she was meeting a stranger, but all about her life he did tell. She ran back to town, talked about the joy she found. See, when the Lord does check for you, you all tell her what to do. Tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus, how he set you free, gave you the victory. Tell somebody, tell somebody about Jesus, tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Tell, tell somebody, tell somebody. Go tell, tell somebody, somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, go tell somebody, tell somebody, tell them how I brought you through, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell them he been good to you, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, how he brought you up, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, how he raised you up, tell somebody. Tell them how good, tell somebody, how good God been. Tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, how he's your friend. Tell somebody, 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 tell tell it, tell somebody, tell him he's been good to you. Tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell him he love you too. Tell somebody, tell somebody. Somebody, tell somebody that he made a way. Tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody that he made a way. Tell somebody, out of no way. Tell somebody, oh go tell it. Tell somebody, oh go tell it. Tell somebody, oh go tell it. Tell somebody, oh. Tell somebody, go tell him now. Tell somebody, go tell him now. Tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell God, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell loving God, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, he'll make a way, tell somebody, 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 tell Oh, he loves you too. Tell somebody. Tell him. Tell somebody. Tell him. Tell somebody. Tell him. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell him. Tell somebody. Yeah. Tell somebody. Let me do it. 
Tell somebody God to bless you. Tell somebody if you're keeping you. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. He saw you through. Tell somebody. 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 You need to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Yeah, tell it. Tell it. Go tell it. Whoa, go tell it. Whoa, go tell it. Tell him he's been good to you. He's a good God. And he loves you too. Go tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. You need to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. God is great. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Hallelujah. God be magnified. God be glorified. We need to tell somebody about the goodness of our God. Hallelujah. 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 I heard the deacon say that we need to be intentional. That we need to be intentional with our praise. That we need to be intentional with our worship. And that we have to be intentional with our witness. We need to tell somebody time is winding up about the goodness of the Lord. The God that saved me. The God that saved you. The God that picked us up and turned us around and placed our feet on a solid ground. Nobody could do it but him. We owe it to somebody else to let them know. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so patient. God is so kind. God is so worthy of our praise. I know I got a witness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. It's Passion Week. It's Passion Week. Whereby we slow down and take a look and remember all that Christ did just to personalize it. Just for me. That he came. That he came in the first place. Giving up everything in heaven just for me. So that I didn't have to die in my sins. So that I didn't have to spend eternity in hell separate just for me. So that I could have a relationship with the holy God of heaven just for me. And we would think that Passion Week means passion like we think about it. Like, oh, I'm so passionate. Passion Week talks about the suffering of Christ. The enduring of all he endured, not because he did a thing wrong, but because we sinned. It's Passion Week for us to remember Christ died for us and to give him his due. Hallelujah. From the fruit of our lips, 
to the waving of our hands or the waving of the palms, but most importantly to the giving of our lives, to not take his sacrifice for granted. Hallelujah. We give him honor today. We give honor to our Father, to Jesus Christ, our Savior, to the Holy Spirit who is surely, hallelujah, in this place, just hovering and, and moving and drawing, hallelujah, to himself. Give honor to our pastor and our first lady. Just ask that God continue to bless you and bless you and bless you again. Give honor to all the ministers and deacons and everybody in the sound of my voice, whether in the sanctuary or virtually. I want to give honor to my family, my mom, my brother, any who else, any others who may be watching. I also want to give honor to Mother Stories, who I got to talk to on last night. And she said, oh, you preaching? I'm going to have to listen. I love you, Mother Stories. God bless you. Amen. Today is a day of celebration. It's, it's Palm Sunday. And God's desire is that each one come to that place of celebration regardless of what is going on. Amen. Can we say that out of our mouths? Can we make that commitment out of our mouths? It doesn't matter what's going on. God, you're worthy of my praise. It doesn't matter what it looks like. God, you're worthy of my worship. I won't let any rock cry out for me. I will praise you with joyful lips, regardless of what it looks like and what it feels like. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy of that. He's worthy of that. Hallelujah. Let us pray, and then we're going to go into the scripture and into this word. Father, we thank you. Oh, we glorify your name. You are worthy of our praise, God. You are worthy of our worship, God. You are worthy of our sacrifice, God. You are worthy, oh God, of our time, Father. You are worthy, oh God, of our love, God. You are worthy, oh God, of our love one for another, God. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for this time that you have ordained just for us just so that we could hear you and see you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And maybe even feel you, Lord God, like we haven't before, Lord. And even if we don't feel you, Lord God, that we would know, Lord God, that your word is true, Lord God, and receive it just as you have given it. Father, Lord God, I just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord God, to deliver your word. Lord God, I ask, oh God, even now, Lord God, that if there's anything in me, Lord, anything I missed, oh God, hallelujah, I ask for your forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus, uh, so that there would be nothing between the Savior and me, Lord. Uh, and I pray that same thing for each hero, oh God, uh, that there would be nothing between us and you, nothing to distract us, oh God, uh, Lord God, from hearing and receiving and doing your word. Father, we thank you, Lord God, right now for your anointing, uh, which breaks yokes and uh, breaks chains, Lord God, and empowers us to do thy will. Uh, I ask right now, Lord God, that it would fall fresh, oh God, um, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, oh God. And I ask that that same anointing, Lord God, be upon the hearers, oh God. Lord God, that as your word lands, Lord God, uh, that it will be received in advance with it. Amen, oh God. Uh, Lord God, that when we leave here, Father, we will be better, Lord God, than when we came. When we leave here, oh God, we will be purpose, Lord God, to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Lord, any who are under the sound of my voice or will hear this later who are not saved, who don't know Jesus as Savior, we pray right now, Lord God, begin to work on them even now. Begin to touch them even now. Lord, maybe make them a little bit uncomfortable, even as I speak, O oh God, so that the word, Lord God, would get their attention, Father, that they would know, Lord God, that there is no place else to go but to you. Father, we cry out, save now. Save now. 
save now. In Jesus' name, I sit down, Lord God, and ask you to stand up and preach this word according to your will. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Save now, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you would turn to me in your Bibles, there are so many scriptures to choose from for a Palm Sunday message. The Lord had us land in Matthew. Matthew, the 21st chapter, Matthew 21, and we're going to start at the first verse when you get there. The Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 21, we're going to start at verse 1. Amen. Amen. We're going to read down to verse 10. 1 through 10. You ready? Praise God. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them, him being Jesus. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road, Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the key verse. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, let's say that together, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? All of life, family comes down to the answer of that question. Who is this? Who is this guy coming in on a donkey whereby people are throwing their clothes on the ground, growing palms on the ground, waving them and praising and worshiping him? Who is this? Who is it that they're talking about? Who is it? Why all the fuss? The answer to that question has eternal consequences. He said, it says, when he came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? Well, we know this one thing, family, that Jesus' heart desire is that everybody get the right answer to that question. The Bible says that what? He desires that all men be saved, that all men come to know him as the son of the living God, the savior of the world, hallelujah. It is his desire, it is his desire that all men be saved and that none would perish, amen? That's the reason for the suffering. 
That's the reason for the beating. That's the reason for going to the cross. That's the reason for going to the grave. And that's the reason for staying there. And that's the reason for getting up on Sunday morning. All so that nobody has to be lost. We need to be able to answer that question. Who is this? And what we find out in so many texts, but also in this one, is that God will move heaven and earth so that each of us can answer the right way. He's the same God that says that I leave 99 sheep to go after that one lost soul. So who is it? Who is it that thinks that you've been abandoned? Who is it that thinks there's no way out? Who is it that feels like you are overlooked? God says that I am looking at you right now. I will leave those who are safe. I will leave those who know me to come after you. Who is it? To cause you to ask the question, who is this? And so what we find out in this text is that God is doing exactly that. He is moving heaven and earth. And for that, we want to go back to verse 10, the one that I said is our key verse. It said that all the city was moved, which caused them to say, who is this? Now, let me tell you what move does not mean here. Move does not mean, oh, that's so nice. That's so special. And look how they're throwing their clothes. And look how they're waving. Isn't that wonderful what they're doing for Jesus? That's not the moved that the Bible is talking about. Because when you look up that word moved, it means turmoil. It means shaken. The Greek word is sizo, S E I. S O, Sio, O, rather, like, 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 that means to rock, to agitate. It's the same word for, you know, that means a seismograph, All right. seismic. Uh-huh. It, 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 it's, it, it's an it's a earthquake. <laughs> it, it's, it's a moving from the perspective of being shaken up. Jesus in this entry, coming into Jerusalem with all of the fanfare behind him and the fanfare in front of him caused an earthquake in the hearts of the people to have to cry out, what is going on? Who is this? Because God will do whatever it takes to get your attention and my attention. Even even if he has to shake some stuff up in our lives. Even if he has to make the ground beneath us unsteady, he wants our heart. He'll do whatever it takes so that we will cry out, who is this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we find is that Jesus had basically said, this is it. The time is now. My time is now. He knew that soon he would be arrested. He knew that soon there'd be the cross. He knew that all of that was coming. And now was the time to allow people to come to a decision. You've got to make a decision. Palm Sunday was about people making a decision. Hallelujah. Am I going to cry Hosanna or am I going to cry crucify him? We have to make a decision. And that is what the Lord was saying to them on that, what we now call Palm Sunday. You've got to make a decision. And I will do anything I need to, even disturb the very ground that you think is stable so that you will cry out to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I know that's not the moving (laughs) that we really wanted to think about because it's such a beautiful and wonderful picture. But Jesus wasn't concerned about a beautiful and wonderful picture. Jesus is concerned about our salvation, about the peace between God and us. He's concerned that we do not spend eternity in hell. His concern was to shake up anything 
necessary to bring us to himself. And so you don't have to ask questions like, oh, what's going on? Oh, how come this happened? Oh, how could God let? God loves you too much. And he will move anything and anyone he needs to to get to your heart. And to cause us to ask an answer and live out the answer to that question, who is it? Hallelujah. We get an answer actually on verse 12. I didn't read it. It says the crowd, the multitude. We know about the crowd and the multitude. Amen. We, Mama told us a long time ago, don't be going with the crowd, baby. <laughs> the crowd and the multitude said, oh, this is Jesus. He's the prophet from Nazareth. Amen. Sold them short like we sell Christ short so much. He's a more than just a prophet from Nazareth, which they thought was like the old Kido country, like is nothing good can come from there. Oh, that's just Jesus is basically what they were saying. He's a prophet, yeah, from Nazareth, but he is so much more. And so we're not going to ask the crowd for the answer to who is this. How about we ask the word for the answer for who is this? Because God is forcing us to a conclusion on today. Amen. Hallelujah. So one of the things we might say, and I've got four points that we're going to talk about, and then we're going to wave our palms and we're going to celebrate Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Four points. But the passage talks uh, about Jesus as being humble and gentle. And that's the way we normally think about this passage, right? Because he came on a donkey. That's why he came on the donkey, because he came in peace, because he wasn't, you know, all about the, um, all about um, the war, amen, at this time. If you were riding on a donkey, you came in peace. If you were riding on a horse, you come for war, amen? He's going to do that later on. <laughs> but right here, he's on a donkey. And so I think one of the first things we would say based on the picture that we're seeing is that he's gentle and he's humble. But I have to tell you, for those who are taking notes, that's not my first point. That's not number one. That part was for free. Hallelujah. He's humble and he's gentle, but he is not passive. Don't get it twisted. He is humble. He is gentle. Hallelujah. He loves little lambs and little babes, but he is not passive. He is, and this is the first point, Deacon Scott, he is intentional. He is intentional, and he forces the issue. Where are you getting that from, Reverend Peoples, what is it that you are talking about? He's intentional, and he's causing them to make a choice. In other words, this whole thing is a setup. You ever been there? You're like, God, you know you set me up. I can't, Lord, you know you set me up. This whole picture, this whole display is a setup. He set up this whole thing. We learn in the beginning of the text that he sends as he's coming near Jerusalem and Bethphage and then to Bethany and then to, to Jerusalem into the city, he sends his disciples ahead, right? And he goes and tells them, go and find, you'll find a donkey and you'll find her colt. I want you to go untie them, which is a whole message unto itself, that you're just going to take somebody else's donkey and untie them and be like, come on with me. The Lord needs you, okay? <laughs> that's, that's like a whole other message that God's got it like that, uh, that Jesus has it like that, uh, that if God says it, just do it and say the Lord needs it, all right? Hallelujah. But that's not the message for today. His, the message for today is that he is intentional, that he set them up to go get this donkey and her colt so that he could then ride into Jerusalem. Now, if any of us have read any stories, been in Sunday school, um, um, just learned anything about Jesus, that we don't ever hear about him riding something uh, until right now. He walked everywhere he went. Unless there was water, then he got in a boat. Everywhere Jesus went, he walked. 
because that's where the common people did. That's what the poor people did. Everybody didn't have the luxury of having a donkey. Everybody didn't have the luxury of having transportation. He walked just like we walk. But on this occasion, just a week before he was, not less than a week before he was going to give his life, he decides, go get me a donkey because I'm going to need to ride into Jerusalem. Well, what does that mean? And what do you mean he is intentional? He knew the Jewish people would know that his riding on that young colt would hearken back to the prophecy that was given in Zechariah 9 and 9. That, that, that verse that we heard, it says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious and lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This was said hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus came in on that colt. But he knew that people had gotten that passed down. They were looking for their Messiah. They were looking for their deliverer. They were looking for their Savior, and they knew how to identify them. So he says, if I'm going to be recognized and people are going to know who I am, you're going to have to go get me that donkey. He set them up to know exactly what he was saying when he came in on the donkey. And so because that's the reason why people started to do things like put their clothes on the ground and cut down branches of trees because they recognized that he was saying, I am the chosen one. I am who you've been waiting for. I am the one mama told you about. I am the one grandma told you about. Ah, oh, hallelujah. I am the one that big mama told you about. I am here. It's no longer a thing that you hear. It's something that you see. I am. I am the one. He was intentional about that detail. And he was also intentional about the fact that he wanted people to see him which is so anti, if there's anybody who knows your Bible, to what Jesus did. He would heal a blind man and tell him, don't tell anybody. He would heal, hallelujah, a deaf man. He would heal, hallelujah, a leper and say, don't tell anybody. If the, um, if the Pharisees got too close to him to try to arrest him, he would slip out the back. Jesus was not an in-your-face, fanfare kind of guy in his ministry, except for this one time. Why? Because he was intentional, and he was forcing the issue. Now, I know what people say. I know it. I know that God is a gentleman, and he doesn't force himself on you. And that is true. He doesn't make you choose him, but he does force you to make a choice. When I come on this donkey, when you see me fulfilling the scriptures, when you see the people putting clothes on the ground, when you see the people waving their palms, when you see the people crying, Hosanna, you're going to have to for be forced to make a choice. Right. Who is this? It was time out for, par for parables and riddles in not wanting people to know because it was too early. He says his time was now. And so he took center stage. <laughs> I think, I feel like maybe we don't get the picture because it's so long ago. But it's hundreds of thousands and, and, and some estimate millions of people, right, coming behind him from Bethphage and Bethany, one, because he had just raised Lazarus from the dead in Bethany. And so they were like, oh, whoever this guy is, he must be God. I'm going, right? So he's got this fanfare of hundreds of thousands of people behind him. And then those coming into the city who were there for the Passover also then shouting, this must be everybody, hundreds of thousands of people making all this noise. The only thing that maybe our 2024 eyes might be able to, 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 to uh, link it to is like a 1980s Michael Jackson concert. 
you know when people are just fainting and falling out and trying to touch him. Oh, God, I touched him. I touched Michael Jackson. That type of fanfare we can see with our eyes. But it was so much more than that. Because that Michael Jackson needed a savior just like we do. But this was the king of kings and lord of lords. And people were pressing in, pressing in, trying to see who is this. He was humble. He was gentle. But he is intentional and he will force the issue. He will make sure that you make a choice. He's not going to let you hang on and stand by on mama's testimony for long. You're going to have to decide who Jesus is for yourself. You're going to have to answer to the Lord for yourself. And he is going to make sure that he gets you in a place, even if it's an uncomfortable place, where you've got to make a choice. That's what he was doing here. Are you going to cry Hosanna or are you going to cry crucify him? There is no middle ground. He told his church, saved folks, I wish that you were either hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth, I need something from you. If you're hot, I can use you. If you're cold, at least I know where you stand, and we can try to turn that thing around. But you can't straddle the fence. Who is God talking to today? You cannot straddle the fence. You are in or you are out. You will tell somebody or you will not, but it is time out for being on the fence. He's intentional, and he forces the issue. That was number one. Two, he says, hallelujah, who is this? He is king. He is king. He is sovereign king. He is a conquering king. And we get that from the text where the people begin to lay down their clothes and cut down the palm branches and things like that, because that was a common Welcome for a new king. See, these things are foreign to us, but it made so much sense to the people in that day. And so when they saw this happen, like, who is this? Who's this new king? Who's this new guy, right? It, it was something that made sense to them. And he was saying boldly, declaring, I am your conquering king. 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 You no longer have to do this on your own. I am your conquering king. So wave your palms if you must. Put down the clothes. But acknowledge that I am king. Acknowledge that I am sovereign. Acknowledge that I am Lord. I am your conquering king. It's like he's asking the question, am I king or not? You tell me. You tell me. Am I the one on the throne or are you? You tell me. Does my rule reign? Does my sovereignty reign or does yours? You tell me. You have to make a choice today. That is what he's saying. It's true. It's time out for accepting Jesus as Savior, but not accepting him as Lord and King. If he's King, then his word rules. If he's King, then glorify him as King and do what he says do. He says we're at a point in time, and the time is winding up, and we've got to make a decision. One preacher put it like this, we've got to either crown him or kill him. That's the decision that they had to make on that day. They either had to crown him and say, I believe he's king, or say that he is a fraud, that he's a blasphemer, and we're going to kill him. We have that same choice. 
Are we going to crown him? Are we going to glorify him? Are we going to obey? Are we going to submit? Are we going to live the holy lives that he called us to? Or are we going to say, nah, not king, not my king. Don't need that sacrifice, kill him. He's forcing the issue. Who is this? He is intentional. He's forcing the issue. He is the conquering king. Point three, he is God. Point blank, as the people say, end the period. (laughs) He is God. So like I said, they had seen um, they had seen the people, people come in, they'd seen dignitaries come in and put down um, clothes and things like that. It's kind of like rolling out the red carpet, right, for famous people today. They'd seen that before, but the combination of that with the Hosanna, <laughs> the combination of that with the blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord said, wait a minute, he's more than just a king. He is the king. As a matter of fact, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is God. And they began to say these words, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Save now. What we don't understand is that those words that they were saying, they were singing in what we would call church every Sunday. They were singing that in the temple each Saturday when they worshiped. That was words that was saved for God himself. And so when Jesus comes in riding on his donkey and people begin to say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he. They were saying, this is God. This is God. This is God, and he is worthy of our worship. As a matter of fact, in another another gospel, they say that when they started to say those things, that the Pharisees were like, tell them to shut up. Stop, Stop them from saying that, because it was so controversial. For them, it was blasphemous to say to who they think is just a guy, Huh? Just just a guy who does some nice things, just a prophet, amen, from Nazareth, and then start talking about Hosanna, save now, start talking about blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. No, they were saying, this is God. I'm making a choice. I'm making a choice. This is God, and this is the God who ensures that his word is fulfilled. Jesus coming in this manner showed them that God's promise to them years and years, exactly 483 years to be exact, to when he promised Daniel that a savior was coming, Jesus comes into town. Because he's God and because his word he cares about and ensures he will fulfill it. So one of the things that we have to make sure that we truly answer for us today is, is he God and what does that mean for us? It means he's worthy of our worship. Even when we're uncomfortable, this made them uncomfortable. It means that he is worthy, hallelujah, of our trust, even when we don't understand it. I don't understand what it meant. I don't understand why you had to come in this way. I don't understand why you had to let my loved one die. I don't understand why you had to have me to lose my job. I don't understand how come I'm going through these health issues. I don't understand, but you are God. And your plan is an eternal plan that I'm seeing just a little bit of this. So we've got to make a decision. When we don't understand, when we don't like, as a matter of fact, when we are angry about why God let something happen, we've got to decide, is he God or not? Make a decision. Make a decision. Is he God or not? Who is this? And finally, the first point, fourth point. So we said he's intentional. He is king. He is God. And the fourth answer to the question, who is this, is that Jesus alone 
is the reason for eternal joy. Jesus alone is alone is the reason for eternal joy. Where did you get that from, preacher? Well, I don't see that in the verses. Well, that's exactly the point. Because the point is what you do not see. You can read through Matthew, you can read through Luke, you can read through Mark, you can read through John, and what you won't see in that whole Palm Sunday story is anybody else's name but Jesus. joy. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. We're not talking about Peter right now. It's me. And you're going to have to look me in the eye spiritually now and know everything I said about myself, that I am the King of Kings, that I am the Lord of Lords, that I am your Savior and your Lord, and that no man comes to the Father but by me. It's just me and you. And I'm forcing the issue. I don't care how comfortable, uncomfortable you feel. That's the point. You've got to make a choice. It has eternal consequences. Choose you this day who you will serve. I don't care about your friends. I don't care. Right now, it's me and you. It might sound corny, but you've got a decision to make. By no other name can we be saved. Jesus is looking for an intentional people who can say, yes, he is my God. Yes, he is my king. And I don't care how much it, how it looks. I don't care if it looks like I'm a holy roller. He is my God and he is, who is, the, who is bold enough? That's the question. Who is bold enough to say, I know the answer to these questions. I know your God. This was not, this was not very difficult. That, that Jesus is king, that Jesus is God. The difficult thing seems to be in us living like he is. I know we started with a lot of elementary stuff. Yeah, I know. I learned he was king of kings when I was in Sunday school at eight years old. Yeah, but you're not living like he's king right now. You're still living like you're on the throne. You're still living like things have to go by you based on your wishes, based on your whims, based on your feelings. Is he king or not? Is he God or not? Or do you have a better plan? He's forcing the issue for those who have not accepted him yet, but he's also forcing the issue for his church who says that they have. Are we living like what we say we know? He's looking for an intentional people. Time is winding up. An intentional people who don't mind looking funny, sounding funny, loving on people just like Christ did enough to say, do you know Jesus? Is he God or not? Is his word true or not? If your neighbor doesn't go, doesn't come to Christ, will he go to hell or not? How important is it to you that he is God and that he is king? 
it might make us more uncomfortable. And for some reason, telling somebody, witnessing, seems to make us uncomfortable. That is a lie straight from the pit of hell. God is giving us, this is our Palm Sunday. And we praised and worshipped him, and praised and worshipped him, and even said a few hosannas. But the question is, is he king? Is he God? And will we be intentional because he is intentional? Will we have that uncomfortable conversation because that's what he did with us? We don't have much time, people of God. Who is this? God bless you. We want to thank the Lord for the word that has been preached here today. Come on, give God some praise. Who is this? Who is this? It ought to cause us to, it ought to challenge us to go deeper for our own personal lives to learn more about who this is. What a word on today. We thank the Lord, amen. God is going to move in a mighty way. God is touching hearts right now. He's making a difference right now. So before we do a call, we want everyone to examine their own heart. Does he live in your heart? Who is this? Who is this that wakes me up every morning? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this that encourages me when I need it? Who is this? Who is this that came into my sick room when the doctor said they didn't know what else to do? Who is this? I'm hearing God speak, amen, this morning, this afternoon, through this awesome word that has come forth. We all have to ask our own question now. Who is this? The word of the Lord has been preached in this house. And, 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 and there may be someone here who does not know Jesus in the pardon of their sin. Listen, you've never given your life to the Lord, but this is the day of decision. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Now I can say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl has to make a conscious decision on their own. You can't live on mama and daddy's prayer but for so long before you have to make your own decision. We heard it today. We heard it in the word. The day that you hear his voice, don't turn him away. Don't harden your heart. Whosoever will, let him come. The Lord says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come unto me, all ye who rest, who labor and rest. Aren't you tired of trying to figure life out on your own? Aren't you tired of fussing and arguing, amen, against God? When God loves you enough to continue to call you? This 
day is for you. See, my day came, but I had to stand up and say, I want Jesus. Anybody else in here had to say, I want Jesus? Amen. That's because your time had come. But somebody's time is right now. And if that's you, I encourage you to come now. I encourage you to come and receive Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior. somebody watching virtually online live stream facebook youtube whatever you're watching on the same word going forth from this sanctuary into your presence amen has calling power has anointed power and perhaps you're sitting there saying well i want jesus as my own personal lord and savior well you're in the right place for the word of the Lord says, if a man believeth in his heart and confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus, that he shall be saved. Any man, any woman, any boy, any girl that wants Jesus, all you have to admit is that you're a sinner, that he came to save you, that you believe this thing in your heart, and you're willing to confess it with your mouth. So if you're at home watching this, or wherever you may be watching this, and you ready to receive Jesus, simply repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of your glory. But Lord, I hear today, Lord, that you gave your life for me. You were intentional about it. You purposely came to take on my sins. Even though you were completely innocent. And die for all my mess. Lord, I want to thank you right now. I want you to know I believe in my heart and I do not confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins and save me now. And if you prayed that prayer right then, guess what? You're born again right now, right where you are. The Lord has taken your sins and dismissed them, cast them into the sea of forgiveness where they should never rise again. He's cleaned your slate and you start fresh right now. I need you to pray now and ask God to send you to a church if you don't have one that preaches and teaches the word of the Lord. And if the Lord needs you to come to First Baptist, call 732-356-1631, 732-356-1631. Leave your name, leave your phone number, or a way for us to reach you, and our church clerk will get back to you. Somebody might be watching, you're already born again, but you don't have a church home. So the doors of the church are open. Somebody here, you may be in the congregation right now, but you've never joined First Baptist. You might have been coming for years, but you've never officially joined. We invite you to stand up and come forward now and say, I want First Baptist Church to be my church home. And if you're online, call 732-356-1631. Leave your name, leave your number, and say, I'm already saved, but I need First Baptist Church to be my church home and somebody the church clerk will get back to you and give you the prerequisites of becoming a member here let us pray Lord we thank you for all that our eyes have seen and all that our ears have heard and all that our hearts have experienced we, we thank you Lord for amen Lord the scripture today Lord we thank you for the welcome today we thank you for the introduction today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that have come today, Father God. But mostly we thank you, Lord, for the message today, God. We thank you, Father God, for you have challenged us to answer that question in depth, Father God. Who is this? And Father God, that's a question that will walk with us out the door. And even though we know that you're Jesus, Son of the living God, even though that we know, Father God, you are our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer, Father God. We know that, Father God, but their question still remains, who is this? Because there's so much more to you, God. We want to thank you, Lord, for your triumphal entry. We want to thank you for the palms that was waved. We pray that you anoint and bless these palms, Lord. The ones that we currently have, Father God. They will signify the very same thing. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! In the highest is our prayer, Lord. We pray for our family right now and ask that your will be done. 
Save in the strong name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, as we wave our palms even now while we're praying, God, we honor you and we glorify you. We love you, Father God, because you first loved us, Father God. And so we lift up holy hands and we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. And all throughout this day, we pray, Father God, that you would arrest anything, Lord, that would come out of our mouths, Lord, that would take away what you put into our spirit today. We pray, Lord, that we can go through this day honoring you and glorifying you and giving you the glory, Father God. We rebuke anything negative today, Father God. We simply want your will to be done all throughout our life, Father God, and all through this day. We want to thank you for your messenger. We ask that you refresh your messenger, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the messenger. Thank you for the message, Father God. Prepare us now, Father God, as we prepare to leave this place. But never from your presence. I ask that you would go with us. Stand by us. Keep us. Guide us, guard us, and protect us. This is the prayer, Father God, of your servant. This is the people's prayer. And the redeemed of the Lord say amen. amen. Say amen. Say amen. amen. Go in peace. Go in peace. Go in peace. God bless you today.